So you bought some solar panels and you don't really know what to do from here? Well, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways harnessing the power of the sun starting now. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to harness the power of the sun using these solar panels, doing it a cheap way and an expensive way. So right now we have these different solar panels and I'll show you a little bit of differences between the specs because it's a good thing to know and we'll start with this big one. Now these panels are the type that you'll see on top of a home or other businesses versus these smaller panels. These are more portable and only 100 watts that you would find at maybe Harbor Freight or the Renogy panels that you can pick up on Amazon and more which make them really portable, kind of like this one here. This is a folding portable 200 watt panel, but super expensive. But we're gonna go over the specs of this one real quick and the others just to show you because this is information you need to know, like being 200 watts. It also has an efficiency rating, which really isn't so important. What we wanna focus on is our voltage and also our amps. So 20.5 volts at max power. And then you have max current amps and then also an open circuit voltage and a short circuit voltage with this is when it's it's not hooked up to anything like you just have a meter on it and it's not plugged into a battery or something else but the max voltage under ideal conditions which is temperature and also clear skies should be approximately 20.5 volts and maybe 9.7 amps and this particular panel has a nice extension cord it comes out and it has a couple connectors on it like these ones that are popular these are mc4 connectors and i'll have a lot of information too down in the description below of a lot of things you'll see now this panel is 100 watts, it's from Harbor Freight. And this is the same exact panel, just from the backside. And if you look at the voltage on this one, it says 18 to 19 volts maximum at 100 watts. And that's again, under ideal conditions like clear skies and cooler temperatures like 70 to 80 degrees. Now this big residential solar panel, this one is an LG panel. If you take a look at the specs on this, 335 watts on an open circuit voltage is 41, but our power max voltage is 34.5 volts and about 9.8 amps. And these are the numbers we wanna look at again because we have to really pay attention to our voltage because of what we plug it into. And it also uses MC4 connectors as well. So now that we've looked a little bit at the specs, well, what do we plug these things into? Well, the most expensive setup is utilizing a small power station like these. These are relatively expensive, about $1,500 each for these, but it's the easiest way to be kind of a plug and play system and ready to go. They come with accessories like this cable so you can hook right up to a solar panel. And as long as you know what you're plugging into it and you know that max voltage, you're not gonna fry or damage these units because this one can hold up to 65 volts. And when this unit is fully charged up, it can provide DC power and it also has AC power in the back so you can run refrigerators, your internet service and more and this unit does the same thing it's just a different brand with a little bit more power in it but i can utilize any of these solar panels i want as long as i know the voltage that i'm plugging these into and basically i don't have to use the name brand ones that they want to sell you that are super expensive because i can pick these things up a lot cheaper like this lg panel these are used residential panels you can find and then also these ones here these harbor freight are only a hundred dollars so it just depends on your setup but one thing you don't want to do is start mixing and matching small panels and big panels in this because that's a totally different video Okay, now hooking up a solar panel to basically one of these power stations, which again, this is the most expensive setup you can get, but this is super easy. Any solar panel like this will have these connectors and then the power station will have the adapter. You take the red and red, which is positive to positive. Then you're gonna take your black and your black, which is your negative and negative, Go ahead and plug those in together. You take the port and plug it into the side of the power station you have. And just like that, the power station is charging. And I apologize for the glare, it's really bad, but we're getting about 35 watts. The unit is about 85% charged. And so now when this is fully charged, if you have a power outage, you can go ahead and utilize this to run your refrigerators, internets, and more. And again, this is the most expensive setup, but now we're gonna go ahead and look at a much cheaper setup. Now this is gonna be a battery setup. This is a lithium battery and you can use other types of batteries like a deep cycle battery and you can charge it with these solar panels again by utilizing either the big panel or the small panel. But how do you take the MC4 connectors and plug it into the battery? Well, you kind of can't. You need a different piece of equipment because if you just plug the solar panel in, you'll fry the battery because the voltage is too high. 
So you need a charge controller like this. This will automatically regulate the voltage that comes out of it to charge up your battery at the correct voltage. This one from Renergy, this Wanderer, has been around a long time. It's super popular and it only runs $25 and it'll charge up lithium batteries, flooded lead acid batteries, your gel and AGM batteries and more. And it's not super fancy, it's super easy to use. It has some lights and indicators and a selector, but you can also get this Bluetooth device to put information right to your phone so you can see what's happening. Or if you want a much nicer device, these MPPT or Maximum PowerPoint Tracking, these are 20% more efficient, but they are a little bit more costly at about $85 depending on the size you get, but they also can handle a lot more input power. Like this one here, the one that we're utilizing can only handle 25 volts versus the MPPTs can handle so much more. So if I want to use this big solar panel that's 34 volts, I can't. So I have to use a smaller solar panel, which is perfectly fine, and I can double these up if I want, but that's again another video. So this is why knowing your input voltage is so important whether you're using a battery or if you're running one of these fancy power stations. Now these charge controllers don't come with these pigtails. You can either make these or I'll have a link in the description on some that you can buy that you can just plug right in. But making these MC4 connectors are really easy. I have a video of it. That way you can just build these MC4 connectors into a pigtail of your choice like these ring connectors. And these are what's gonna connect to the battery. So we have the charge controller now connected to the battery with the positive on positive and the negative on the negative with a little inline fuse right there. And this connects to those MC4 connectors to the charge controller and now this just basically works its way over to the solar panel and now the solar panel is charging up the battery at the correct voltage because the charge controller is now doing all the work for us and again it's a super simple setup that anybody can do now this doesn't show us a whole lot of information like how many watts and volts are going in but you can actually find other items to help you with that that way you can see really what's going on besides just this charge controller and it being blank this power analyzer will actually give us a lot of great information. It's good for testing panels and more. So now, instead of having just this solar panel, you can plug in this little analyzer and it'll show us all kinds of cool information. And now instead of just looking at this black box with a couple of blinking lights, this power analyzer will show us our wattage and our voltage live. And when this battery is fully charged, this will go to zero. And so it's a cool little piece of equipment to add to your setup. So you can basically see what's going on and know when your battery is charged and how much power is coming in. But now how do we use the power that's in the battery for future use? You'll need something like this, which is an inverter. This takes the DC power from the battery and changes it or inverts it to AC power so you can use it. So now you can plug in again, internet service, a refrigerator and more with those AC plugs. You also get a DC plug to charge up your phone and other devices. And so these are super simple to buy and use. And it's basically that power station but it looks like this without all the fancy gadgets, an inverter, which there's one in there, along with a charge controller and a lithium battery. So this is kind of what that setup looks like in a fancy box, but you have all this stuff kind of hanging outside like your charge controller, but this is only about $700. And hooking an inverter up is easy because there's only two cables, a positive cable, and then you have your black negative cable. And these connect like we did earlier, basically positive on positive, negative on negative, just like we did with the charge controller. And as long as the sun is out putting power into the battery we have plenty of juice to where we can run the inverter and these are easy to use you simply just turn on the power and plug in whatever it is you want to plug in like a refrigerator again or the internet or maybe you want to run a hair dryer to dry your hair well since this hair dryer uses about 15 to 1600 watts and we have a thousand watt inverter it's not going to power this very long if actually at all because what will happen is is that when we turn this all the way up it's going to overload the inverter and then it's going to shut off on us. So you have to take this into consideration when you're going to build a little backup battery station. So then you have to decide now, well, how do I want to configure my setup and what is it that I really need? Are you going to buy a power station that's plug and play and ready to go? Or are you going to build your own system that's completely modular? You can change it at any time and it's a lot cheaper and you can double the amount of power for that same power station on the left. Let me know in the comments which way you would rather go and let me know if this video helped you out.